about the te I'm going to start doing some teachable seminars. Uh, so somebody's asking about that. So the answer is where and when. The answer is is uh, I guess you can't. Yeah. yeah. The answer is where it will be on. I, I will I will let everybody know about this when the time comes. When is in the next month, maybe a bit longer. I'm still working on getting all these videos put together. Um, what's the format? Basically, it's a subscription service. There's going to be three separate channels. One on studs, one on <laughs> one on studs, one on, on raising puppies, one on mamas. Uh, and they will be discounted based on how you want to join and whether you want two or three or all of these together. So uh, I want to make it very informative. Um, it's it, the thing that you're really going to get out of this, it's going to be searchable. So it's going to be a course that leads you from the beginning to the very end. But you know, on things like puppies, for instance, there's all kinds of problems that puppies are going to have. And if you're trying to find those on my YouTube videos, you're going to have a hard time finding it. This, it will be completely obvious. There will be lectures on, on just on puppy illnesses, and they will all be broken down into 10 or 15 different categories of things that you can do, diagnosis and how you treat these particular things. So I hope it will be pretty useful. It's not there yet. You're not missing it yet. Uh, Yote asks about, he's talking about prices for a stud dog service. He's asking about A, B, K, C and B, C, A. I think this is probably um, American Bulldogs. I think that's what this is, but I don't know if that's what you're asking about. If it is, then I'm not really up. I'm up on French Bulldogs because that's what we've got. But let's talk about how you should price a stud dog because I think I've got some general ideas that I think make sense across the board. So, ultimately, the price that you should charge is got to reflect the value of the litter that you're producing. So with that in mind, um, I, I think that basically what you should be getting is about 10% of the value of the litter, of the average litter that your stud dog will be producing. So, those prices change, obviously, and there's obviously there's no... Some people, for instance, they price things based on the dog that they're breeding to. For instance, with fluffies, some people want more money if you're breeding to a full fluffy than if you're breeding to a non-fluffy dog. We don't do that, but we certainly could do that. So let's just investigate this a little bit. So let's say that you have a full fluffy bred to a full fluffy. It's going to produce a litter of full fluffy Frenchies. What's the value of that litter? It varies a lot. But let's just say that the average price of the dog was $20,000 and you had five, lit five puppies in the litter, that would be a $100,000 litter. A representative stud fee for that dog may be $10,000, 10% of the stud fee. That's about where it is. Um, you know, if you had Labrador Retrievers, I'm not up on price on. Well, let's, let's talk about doodles because I know a little bit about that because your daughter, your uh, sister said some doodles, right? Golden doodles. Golden doodles. All right. So, so what is the value of a golden doodle? I think she got about three grand a gold. Is that about right? Yeah. And you typically have what eight to ten puppies in a, in a, in a, in a Oh yeah. Okay. Sometimes twelve. Okay. So let's just go with ten. Ten dogs at three thousand dollars a piece. That's a thirty thousand dollar litter. The stud fee should be around three thousand dollars, which I think is about what you paid. Right. So there you go. So that's a, that's the way. And then of course the other thing you can do is go look at places like Canine Stud Dog and see what's out there and what people are asking. It's going to be a huge range. I mean, if you look at our stud dogs, our stud dogs are definitely not the least expensive dogs out there. That was never our goal. Our goal is to be the best, have great quality dogs with great service. And so you'll find our prices are on the higher end of things, not the lower end of things. So, you know, when you're, when you're looking to get stud service, you don't necessarily want to find the cheapest dog out there. Want to look and see you know, what's the reputation of people are doing it. What do they do if things go wrong? What's their guarantees? Those kind of things. But in terms of you as starting a stud service, I would say that uh, um, your, your first goal would be to look and see what's out there and value it at about 10% of the, of the stud service. And also start at a lower price and get people interested. And you can raise your prices as you get more demand for the dog uh, and you can see what it produces. Alright, so. Um, all right.
right, somebody's asking about border teller. Do you do this yourself? Mm. Border teller is part of our, our shots, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So the answer is we do a com we do shots. Uh, we do shots on puppies at. Um, Six, nine, twelve weeks. And those shots we administer ourselves and they include water tell. You can do that yourself too. Be aware of the fact that when you get a combined shot that includes water tell or any of these things, it needs to be refrigerated. Don't let your shots out in the water for any length of time whatsoever at all. If they're being shipped and you do good with one day service, pay the extra money to have it in a cold pack. Um, okay. Uh, if you're doing rabies shots, you can't do a rabies shot, it includes maybe other things, you can't do a rabies shot and at the same time get a uh, um, water tiller shot. Okay, and I think that that is it. Somebody else asked about what temperature for our incubators, we'll cover that one real quickly. So our incubators are, have heated floors in and they don't, they don't heat the air up inside. For that they're much higher than a heated air system you set those up to around 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 38 degrees how, how long centigrade. Does it say? one hour and 44 minutes um, no, well it was saying what the so hold up was. with um, with um, other be other incubators they're completely different and the temperature will be different so if you're asking me about temperature of other incubators i won't be able to give you a reliable answer because a forced air incubator is going to be a lower temperature because it heats up the whole environment and typically they're going to be something around 90 degrees so there we go hey thanks for watching bye for hey thanks for watching the the video uh, i really appreciate people who subscribe to me it helps me encourage me to do more of these videos but do remember disclaimer here i am not a vet I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.